In the last video, we introduced the matrix exponential, um, which was the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial a to the n, where we understand a to the zero to mean the identity matrix. And in this video, we're going to prove some properties that this function has. So let me state all these properties together in one big lemma. So first, and most important, this sum converges. Right, it's a power series, it converges. Moreover, it converges absolutely, which means that if you take the norm or the absolute value of each term and do the sum, that still converges. You have to worry about, about what you mean by taking the absolute value of a matrix, but we'll talk about that. Uh, it actually converges in another nice way too. Uh, so it converges uniformly along with all its partial derivatives on any bounded set of matrices. So even to state what this really means, you know, what do I, what am I taking the partial derivative with respect to? Uh, I need to t talk a little bit more, and this proof, you know, of convergence is going to be quite technical. So this proof of convergence, I'm going to defer to an additional optional video because I think proving it in the mainstream of videos would distract from the main flow of the course. But what does it actually give us? Well, the absolute convergence tells us we can reorder the terms with impunity. We don't have to worry about the value of the sum changing. And the uniform convergence along with the uniform convergence of the partial derivatives means that we can differentiate exp basically with respect to things like the matrix entries of A um, and that we can differentiate inside the summation. In other words, if we stick a d by d something outside, we can take it inside the sum without worrying about changing the value of anything. Okay, so we're not going to prove part A. We're going to use part A to reorder terms and differentiate things um, in parts B, C, and D. Okay, so part B, um, the claim is that if we take the if we introduce a variable t and we do d by dt of the function exp ta, which makes sense because of uh, the fact we could differentiate exp, what we get is a exp ta. So what do I mean when I say differentiate a matrix with respect to this variable t? Well, exp ta is a matrix whose entries depend on t. I mean, we're differentiating each entry separately and we get a new matrix. And that new matrix is a times x t a. That's what b means. Okay, c. Um, if a and b commute with one another, so that a b equals b a, then we get the nice law of exponents or law of logarithms, whatever it's called, uh, that we're used to with numbers, which the which is the exp a exp b equals just exp of a plus b. So this works if the matrices commute with one another. So if a b equals b a. If they don't commute, this is usually going to fail. And um, we'll discuss exactly how it fails um, when we talk about the baker campbell hausdorff formula in a later video. Finally, part D, um, x of A is an invertible matrix for any A with inverse x of minus A. Okay, so these are the three things we're going to prove next. That D by dt, x of T A is A, x of T A. 
that exp a x b is exp a plus b if a and b commute, and that exp a is invertible and its inverse is exp of minus a. Okay, let's start by proving b. Okay, well, I'm just going to write out this formula using the power series for x. So d by dt of x t a is d by dt of this infinite sum uh, 1 over n factorial now t a all to the power n. I said because of the nice convergence properties that we haven't proved, we can take this d by dt inside the summation sign. So we get sum over n of 1 over n factorial of d by dt of whatever this is. Well, this is t to the n, a to the n. And if I differentiate that with respect to t, well, the a to the n is acting just as a constant coefficient here, so I just get the usual nt to the n minus 1. So this is sum 1 over n factorial um, nt to the n minus 1 a to the n. Well the n over n factorial is going to give us um, 1 over n factorial, and then we have t to the n minus 1 and actually I can pull a factor of a out because um, well the the a equals zero term sorry the n equals zero term that would be uh, wouldn't have a, a factor of a disappears because we've got an n here and if n equals zero that that kills everything so we just get a in front of everything and then an a to the n minus one in each term all right just pulling out a factor of a from all of the terms and if you look at this closely, this is the sum, or this is a times the sum um, of one over n factor uh, n minus one factorial t a to the n minus one, and the sum is now happening instead of from n equals zero up to infinity, it's happening from n equals one up to infinity, because as I say, the n equals zero term becomes zero because of this n that we're multiplying by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel n minus 1 and call it m. So when I do that, I'm getting the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of 1 over m factorial a t a to the m. And there's still an a outside. And if I write out what that means, that's a exp t a. All right, because this sum is again the exponential function. Okay, so that's what we wanted to prove for b. Just in case you're confused about this, let me do a quick example. So d by dt of exp uh, t times this matrix we looked at uh, last time. Um, but I'll, I'll just do the case theta equals 1, so 0 minus 1, 1, 0. All right, so last time we did exp of 0 minus theta, theta 0, so just set theta equal to 1. Uh, what is this? Well, it's d by dt of this matrix cos t minus sine t sine t cos t by what we did last time, which we can do, right, we can differentiate that term by term. We get minus sine t uh, minus cos t cos t and minus sine t. And now the claim is that this is a times x t a. Well, a is this 0 minus 1, 1, 0. So this is supposed to be 0 minus 1, 1, 0 times um, this original matrix cos t minus sine t sine t cos t. Does that work? If I multiply these two matrices out I get minus sine t minus cos t cos t and minus sine t. 
which is exactly what I've got on the previous line. So it works. Good. Next, let's go back and see what we're supposed to prove. Right, we're supposed to prove two things. If A and B commute with one another, then X by XB is X by A plus B. And X by is invertible with inverse X of minus A. First, I want to observe that D is an easy corollary of C. So let's prove that C implies D. Well, A commutes with minus A. Um, so A times minus A equals minus A times A. So part C will tell us that exp of A times exp of minus A equals exp of A minus A, which is exp of the zero matrix. And if you think about what that means, it's the identity plus zero plus zero plus zero. So it's just the identity. So that's telling us that a x bay is invertible and it's inverse is x of minus a. So that that proves D. So what we need to do is we need to justify why C is true. Well, I'm uh, gonna need more space. Let's get another page. Let's compute exp a, exp b, and see where it takes us. Let's just substitute in the power series. We have sum from m equals zero to infinity of one over m factorial a to the m times sum from n equals zero to infinity, one over n factorial b to the n. Okay, now using the fact that these series converge absolutely, we can just stick those two summation signs outside and not worry about changing the values of the sum. So this equals sum, sum. So first is the sum over m, second is the sum over, sum over n of 1 over m factorial n factorial a to the m b to the n. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to group these terms together. And I'm going to group them according to the total power of A and B. So for example, there's a constant term, which is where M and N are both zero. That's just going to be the identity. It's A to the zero times B to the zero. Then there's going to be a term which is linear in A and B. So I can have m equals 1, n equals 0, or I can have m equals 0, n equals 1. And the first one will give me A and the second one will give me B. Then I'm going to group together the quadratic terms. So um, m could be 2, n could be 0, which would give me um, 1 over 2a squared. The 1 over 2 comes from this m factorial at the front. And then I can have um, m equals 1, n equals 1. So a, b, that's quadratic. So the total power is 2. Um, and again, I get a n equals 2, m equals 0 term, which is a half b squared. OK, so I'm grouping the terms together according to whereabouts they appear on this grid. So I'm drawing a grid here with the m going to the right, the n going down, and then I get i in the top left, and then a, b on the first diagonal going uh, top right to bottom left, and then a half a squared, a, b, half b squared, and then there'll be cubic terms, uh, quartic terms, etc. So I'm going to call the exponent, the total exponent, uh, k. So this is this first thing is k equals 0. This is the constant term. Then k equals 1 is going to be the linear term. k equals 2 is going to be the quadratic term, etc. So I'm going to group together all the terms in the sum in this way. So my sum becomes i plus a plus b plus a half a squared plus a b plus a half b squared plus dot dot dot. So that's the sum over k starting at 0 up to infinity. And then 
Well, what have I got? Well, each of these terms is a sum. It's a sum from, I don't know, let's say m equals zero. So m will always start at zero if we start on the left-hand side of this diagram. And it'll increase as we move our way up the diagram and it'll end up at uh, m equals k. And then we just have one over m factorial times one over n factorial. Well, n is um, k minus m in this picture. Right, if we're on this sort of diagonal group of things corresponding to fixed value of k, then n and m are related by n equals k minus m. So we have 1 over m factorial, k minus m factorial, times a to the m, times b to the k minus m. So if that's confusing to you, write out the, the k equals 1, k equals 2 terms of this sum, and you, you'll see that you get the sum that I've just written above. OK, let's take stock of this formula. This looks a lot like a binomial expansion. The thing inside the big sum looks like the binomial formula applied to a plus b to the k, except that if this thing in the front was a binomial coefficient, it would have a k factorial on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick in a factor of k factorial there on the top and divide by k factorial outside. And that won't change anything, right? Because I'm simultaneously multiplying and dividing every term by k factorial. So I get sum over k of 1 over k factorial times the sum from n equal m equals 0 to k of k factorial over m factorial k minus m factorial a to the m b to the k minus m and now that thing inside that sum that that second sum that's the binomial expansion of a plus b to the k so overall what i have is sum over k of 1 over k factorial a plus b to the k which is just exp of a plus b great now where did I go wrong? I made a mistake here, intentionally. Where did I go wrong? Well, for a start, I didn't use the assumption that I'm supposed to use, which is that A and B commute with one another. Well, I did use the assumption, I just didn't say that I'd used it. I used the assumption at this point here in going from the binomial expansion uh, of A plus B to the K to this um, expression here. So the point is this step here relies on the fact that A and B commute. Let's see why that is. What happens if I try and take the binomial expansion of A plus B squared? What do I actually get? I get A squared. I get an AB term. I also get a BA term and I get a b squared term. Remember this is just a b, uh, sorry, a plus b times a plus b. So there's an a b term and there's a b a term. And if a and b don't commute, what you cannot do is to group these two together and call it 2ab. And that's what we've implicitly done at, at this stage of the calculation. In order to write the usual binomial theorem, we need a and b to commute with one another. So this assumption was being used at this point. Okay, so we'll discuss what happens when A and B don't commute with one another when we talk about the baker campbell hausdorff formula. One last comment. This trick we used of grouping terms um, according to the total exponent K, uh, this is called the Cauchy product formula. And you can use it whenever you have absolutely uh, convergent power series that you're multiplying together. So this uh, up here, this is called the Cauchy product formula. Namely going from this double sum to a double sum grouped by K. Okay, so all this relies on the fact that our exponential power series converges and that we'll delegate to a, an optional video.